and the thing that money does by by putting a price on it you are filtering out your not ideal clients you don't want someone who's just going to come and leech off you Mm. you want someone to be committed to actually seeing it through this is the business of art G'day for the business of art, where creativity and commerce come together. On this channel, we talk about tips, tools, and strategies that you can apply to your artistic work so that you can grow an income from your creativity. Today's conversation is with Mungo McKay. Now, Mungo is an acting coach, and uh, he also works as an actor and a cinematographer, 20 year veteran of the industry, really knows his stuff. And today we're talking about how he can grow to a more steady stream of clients for his coaching business. That's where the conversation started. We covered a whole range of things that I think are really great to think about for any creative business. And so if you're out there looking for different ways that you can grow what you're doing, really dig into some of these concepts and think about how you could apply them to what you're doing. So what I will do is because we do jump around a little bit in the conversation is I will link up in the description below a bunch of timestamps that you can look at and go, okay, well, we're talking about that at that particular time so that you can jump to it specifically if that's something that you're interested in. But until then, check this out. Hope you get a lot out of it. I'll see you on the other side. So let's chat about what you're wanting to achieve. So what are you hoping? What's the goal? What do you want? a steady stream of clients. Yep, cool. And in, uh, so what's the service that you're providing? Uh, private acting coaching, one on one. And plus, I've just started doing uh, maintenance classes, which are groups of six cool. students at a time. Okay, great. So, a couple of different levels of stuff going on. Um, yeah, well, the, um, the maintenance class at the moment, that's, so speaking of levels, it's the advanced. Um, level mm-hmm. and probably eventually going to uh, add to that with beginners. Cool. So, what do you want to focus on first? Building the maintenance class and getting that kind of rolling, or is it more the one on one? Or you sort of, I, I think probably more the one on one. Okay. Because that includes self tests. Yeah, self tests um, and show reels. Um, but also too, I mean, with um, I, I, it's sort of they, they work hand in hand, so to speak, because the, um, the the single classes um, or the, the privates, um, the the people that attend that have a choice of coming to um, maintenance class and vice versa. Yeah. So people that do maintenance class, when they become aware that I can do. Um, uh, self tests as well as private coaching one on one. They've got that option as well. Um, so I pretty much let them know that. Still as a paid service, or is that like they get to come and do one of those for free or discounted or anything like that? Uh, just the, still as a paid service. Yes. Yeah, cool. So just cross marketing within your own audience mm. base. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Great. So you're starting at the moment, what you want to do is focus on, correct me if I'm wrong, um, more advanced level actors, so people that have been in the industry a while, got some training, done some things. Um, yeah, uh, specifically just with the maintenance class, um, when it comes to doing privates, it's the broad spectrum, someone okay. who's never acted before, um, up to the level of um, someone who's been in the industry for a Okay, long, cool. Long time. So the private one-on-one classes could be for anyone and everyone, and then the maintenance stuff is more at the moment is more for the advanced yeah yeah okay cool so the thing you want to focus on first is the private building the private one-on-one kind of classes um yeah yes okay but if you built the maintenance stuff that might flow on to the one-on-one stuff as well um yeah well just well because at the moment uh, the maintenance class does take a little bit more effort gotcha um because it's not, I mean, I try and keep it as a simplistic setup as possible, yep. but every now and then um, I'll put a little bit of extra effort into it. Cool. So that yep. they, you know, the people that go to maintenance class, class have a little bit more uh, leeway to use what they've just performed as part of their showreel if they want. Okay, so part of the maintenance stuff is that you'll shoot 
uh, a scene with them at the end, or it's just you know, it, it's it's roughly it's it's the scene at the beginning and the end. Um, the format at the moment is it's it's a four week block, mm -hmm. and there's two uh, scenes in those four weeks, so it's oh, okay. one scene every two weeks. So um, they come in and we do a little bit of experimentation to start off with. I give them some direction and they go away and they watch what they've done because everything's taped. Is that the proper word for it these days? <laughs> uh, recorded. Recorded. Yes, recorded on an SD card and they, I, I implore them to watch it as soon as they can because one of my philosophies is about um, hindsight. Yep. Uh, watching what you've done and being able to improve on what you've done uh, by um, tweaking it in the rehearsal process between the first class and the second class or the last time we actually shoot that scene. Yep. Yeah. Great. Great. So, cool. So what's capacity for you? What would be... It's full, I'm happy. If they were all coming at the time that you wanted, how many a day, how many a week, what, what sort of, what's the numbers look like? Well, I think probably about three to four privates a day. Mm -hmm. um, and then maintenance class maybe three or four times a week. And but maintenance class is six people at a time. Yes. It's full. Okay, cool. To give people yeah. that, that, um, that run time in front of the camera. Yep. They're given a decent amount of time to work out. Mm. So it's very, um, so the, the direction is very personal. Yeah. People are treated very personally. Yeah, as opposed to, I think, from what, I, what I've heard, a lot of the majority of um, other classes that are held around Brisbane are there, there's quite a lot of people and yeah. they don't have that much run time. Or, yeah, you don't get much time in front of the camera yourself or much direction yourself. No. Cool. So three to four a day, you're talking five days a week for the privates? Um, yeah. So you're sort of 15 to 20 a week? Yeah. And that's all one person's? Yep. Mm. But the business is operating 24-7, so that, that time is flexible. It doesn't have to yeah. be Monday to Friday. Yeah, well, I think, look, at the moment, it's 24-7. Yeah. But that's just to encourage well, that's people just to come when Working they... with them, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah. your cause... ideal setup would be either, you know, 9 to 5 or even 12 to 7 or something so that, you know, you may be not working the whole day. You know, if you have to do some evenings, you can have a block where you go, this is the business hours. Yeah. You know, it gives you, you know, you're not kind of just yeah, piecemealing it all over the place. Mm. Would, would something like that be more the ideal setup? Uh, yeah, well, uh, ultimately, yes, it would be. But I mean, when it comes to this industry, it's very hard to yeah, yeah, I get that, I get that. To, but because people know. got to have a day job, yeah, you know, to be able oh, to absolutely, survive. yeah. And but often yeah. they get a self test, and it has to be done tomorrow. And I have to see yeah, so then you've got the at eight o'clock. Yeah, the but that's thing. that's an ad hoc type setup. That yep. that situation is someone ringing up with an instant need. Yep. We're talking about the scheduled classes, you know, so. Would it be more, do you run them more during the day or more at night at the moment? More weeks or weekends? It, it's, it's a bit of a mix. It's a bit of a mix and I think it kind of, at the moment, it's averaged out to be half and half. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there seems to be a lot more, um, at, the mo at the moment anyway, um, there's a lot of nighttime people. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess they have daytime jobs. So yeah. They can only get here after seven o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. But Which I think is the bulk of people anyway. So. Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Mm. So trying to working around that. So yeah, I mean scheduling it when it suits. That's cool. So capacity three to four. So fifteen to twenty for the individuals. Three to four classes a week for the maintenance. Yeah. At the moment, maintenance cool. is two. Yeah. You're running two separate sessions. Yes. Okay. Cool. That's good. Great. Excellent. So what is bringing those people in? What's compelling them to go? You know what? It's time. I'm going to do that. Well, some of it is word of mouth. Um, some of it is past students mm -hmm. um, that I've worked with previously over yep. the last uh, nearly 20 years now. Yep. Um, and uh, others are through recommendation from, uh, well, I guess as in, as in word of mouth, but also recommendation from um, agents. Yep. So you agents are putting the advertising out for you to their actors on yeah their well books. we um we've approached pretty much all of the agents in brisbane right and it's a bit hit and miss um when it comes to that because some of the um agents have their own uh, acting
teaching teachers. Yeah. Yeah, that I guess they have on board or are more biased to giving no, the work to... It's all about that relationship and that connection that they already have, so... Yeah, yeah, so I don't hear from some of them at all. Yeah. Um, whereas some of them I do, some of them are quite supportive. Yep. Yeah, so they sort of, they, they um, head the potential actors or the, the newbies sort of in my direction. Yeah. Cool. So a number of those uh, existing clients that you have, I repeat, have people who have been coming back more than once, definitely, for the privates. On average, I think people doing privates are doing at least half a dozen, a few, I'm saying, over a few series of weeks. Yeah. So they're coming back and they might have a break a little bit and then come back, so that's... So the one-on-one -on -one coaching, is that the same as the maintenance, where it's a series of days over a series of weeks, or one, um, one session that they do and then they go away, or...? Well, it's one session and they go away, but they, they come back with... Because um, during the course of the hour, of course, we'll run the scene, um, and I'll give them specific notes um, on improving their technique. Mm -hmm. um, and then they have the opportunity to then go away, uh, review their work, because everything is recorded. Yep. Um, and then come back. Um, it's sort of like I set them homework. Yeah, yeah, great. To do. So I sign up for a one on one with you. The first time I come, I get an hour with you. We sit down, we go through a scene. I run the scene a few times. Tell me what the process is. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yep. much, it's pretty much yep. that. And so it's just that one hour. If I want to come back and review that, is that included in that first time price or? Um, no, well, it's actually the, um, usually, when someone first comes here, we spend more than an hour. Yep. Um, excuse me. Um, yeah, we spend uh, more than an hour because there's always that general chit chat at the beginning because I want to know about their background. Yep. And exactly what they've done in the past, you know, in relation to, you know, how good their technical skill is, so to yep. speak, or what they've learned, uh, which is quite surprising sometimes because, you know, some of these. Um, some of these actors have been to quite a few different classes and they know nothing. Mm. Yeah, it's and that, but that initial um, initial booking is usually runs longer than an hour, but they're only charged for the hour. Yeah, so sure. That's, that's the <coughs> so there's value in it for them. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So we go through the scene and you give me some tips and advice on running that scene and, and tweaking it and improving it and then um, we film that, I go away, I can review that myself later, yep. and then I can come back and do another session with you. Yep, yep. And that's the same scene. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, so we'll run the same scene, um, I guess, usually for as long as it takes. I mean, uh, I think I've been doing it long enough now where I know that it's sort of enough is enough. You reach a plank yeah, length, yeah. length when it comes to performing the actual scene, and it's yep. like, well, it's time uh, to move on to something else. And that varies client to client, depending yeah. on their experience level. And yep. Like yeah. Yeah. So I guess I'm just, so for me, I want to sign up for a one-on-one. -on -one. What's my expectation, just to be clear, that it's really the first time I'm just buying that one session, that one hour session, we're going to work on that and then I go away and if I want to keep working on that, I can buy another session and come back. Yeah. All right. So mm -hmm. do you ever sell that as a multiple session package? No. No. Why not? Um, well, I leave it up to the client whether or not they, whether or not they, um, feel the need to come back, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, you know, there, there's some uh, clients that I've had that actually haven't, they've had the one session and they haven't come back. Yep. And I mean, it could be for varying reasons. Yep. And I think maybe like some of it is probably based on the, the delusional aspect of the industry where um, they're not expecting it to be as hard as it usually yeah. is, you know, when it comes to, you know, at least having your lines down. Yeah. But being competent enough with having your lines down that you can then juggle the different exercises that I give these people. Yep. Yeah, so, yep, some of them find it a little bit too difficult um, and uh, they don't come back. But I think which most is fine. people have been coming back. I, I was just about to ask, what yeah. is the current repeats that you have? What would you say the Percentage-wise? Yeah, what's the average number of people uh, that would come back for an, at least one more session? Uh, probably 90% of people. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I think everyone's been um, very happy. I mean, the, um, the general comment is that uh, they learn more in the first session than what they have over 
previous multiple classes from mm -hmm. different acting teachers. So what's your current price for a one-on-one -on -one session? $50 an hour. Okay, $50 for the first hour. Yeah. Okay. So given that most people come back and would you say that the value that you're giving far exceeds $50 an hour? Oh, absolutely. So just, just an idea off the top of my head is that if most people are coming back for a second session and um, you don't have to just sell that, right? So my thought would be um, just as an option is have your one-on-one -on -one session and then maybe for that one first session, even increase the price for a one-on-one one -one session once off like a single session of $75 for that hour. Mm. They're gonna get the value anyway because it's gonna be more than an hour, you've already said that. So really they're still getting good value out of $75. And then you have a two session package set at $100, which is your $50 an hour that you're currently charging, that you're currently gonna get out of them anyway. 90% of them are gonna do that. So what you're doing is for anybody that's a bit unsure and wants to do one session, you're getting a little bit more revenue out of that person which is still great value. I mean, 75 bucks for a one-on-one -on -one session, I've seen that charged around. Plus you can make it 70, make it 65, whatever you want to do. But for that one session, because you know that's just that one-off thing, it's really common across a lot of industries for that one individual thing to be a, a slightly higher and you get a discount for a repeat. So I would throw at you, think about that concept that you know if you're currently charging $50 an hour, and a lot of people are already coming back. Well, then don't punish them. Give your second session, average it out at the 50 bucks an hour each, and then set a price for a one-on-one -on -one session that's a little higher. So that if somebody was, was just gonna come in and do once, but basically people are rewarded for loyalty. Mm. They get that chance to have that perceived discount. Well, it is a discount, right? They're still getting good value out of it. So just straight off the bat, that's one thing I would suggest that you that's think an about. It's an interesting way of yeah. approaching it. Yeah. And you know, reward people for loyalty. They're still getting, like your current clients are still getting, you know, you could just have your current clients still at the $50 rate if they come and do one session. Anybody new coming in doesn't know any different, right? So they're not gonna know that you used to charge 50 or that that person over there is getting it for 50 because they've never been here before. And so somebody who's brand new coming in, if you sell it at 70 bucks, 75 bucks for that first session, you know, and even if you say that first session is 90 minutes, you know, maybe you don't want to do that because, but you know, it's still because you, you should... could cut that session off at an hour. Like if you could really tighten that up so that that was an hour they come in, it's done. You know, so there's an opportunity there to, you know, tweak that a bit. But then getting that additional cash flow of somebody that is going to go, well, you know, I don't know if I need one or two. Well, two sessions, it's a good deal. I'll, I'll just buy the two straight up. So it just jacks your cash flow up in the front end a little bit faster. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. And yeah, you could even blow that out to three sessions and, you know, maybe you go, well, three sessions, you get it for 50, a two session, let's do 55 a session, one session, 70. So if somebody really wants to dig in deep, they're going to get rewarded financially by having a discount on that, which doesn't ever drop below what your kind of minimum price is that you want to charge. Mm. And then the more that they reduce the contact time, the higher the price goes. Mm because like <laughs> yeah well it is because yeah. you think about anyone that's an expert in their field right if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching with someone who's an expert in their field like there's a marketing guy that I follow that most of the work that I well pretty much all of the work I'm doing now from a marketing perspective is based on his framework he charges $2,500 an hour for a consultancy right but he is an expert in his field right you've been doing this a long time you've got really great credit you you know you've done the work you've got the runs on the board you know your crap man you know mm. what you're doing 50 bucks an hour is too cheap but you've also got to take into account what the market's willing to pay i totally get that <coughs> um, but you know to go well for one-on-one -on -one private coaching you know that should be the premium price mm. that people pay for your time so i'd really think about that you know what is your minimum that you're not going to go below 50 bucks an hour great well, then maybe you know, blow that out to a three session package at $50 an hour, a little bit more an hour for a two session, a bit more again for a single session. Right. Because then the other thing that people see is that additional perceived value in the longer sessions. 
and go, oh, well, actually, if I do three sessions, which, let's face it, it probably will take me a good couple of sessions to do it, and you know, in your marketing copy on the web page or whatever it is, however you're selling that, you can say, look, we can focus on you know the three scenes, or you know, if you want, you get through it, we do it in two sessions, I'm happy to refund you the difference between the three sessions and the two sessions, if you want to do that. You can find ways to kind of make people feel comfortable because there will be a lot of people going, well, I don't know if I want three sessions. I don't know if I'm going to need three sessions. You know, well, if, you only, if, we, if we nail it in two, I'll give you the difference back. So you're only paying for a two-session pack, you know? Well, I think usually it takes longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the... that's the thing, that anyone that's really serious about it is going to come along and find, gosh, I need another three sessions, you know? Yeah. So, you know, you're probably going to find that. But by adding that, perceived value which it is value because your your time is worth more than 50 bucks an hour one on one right mm. absolutely because i know what you can do yeah yeah but, uh, look, the, the, the reason the reason why we're, we're doing it at 50 dollars an hour at the moment um is with the the future plan of um escalating the price anyway not a sort of not escalating as in like no no i understand the concept right up, of but... growing the price as demand grows yeah that's one of the things that i'm doing with the sonnets that i sell online at the moment is I've got that set at a price that is a very good price for what it is because mm. it's a completely customized item, 100% customized to the person that's buying it, right? And I'm only selling that at 195, and that's ridiculous. Like it should be in the three or four hundred dollar mark, but right now I'm trying to get traction and trying to get the word out and build the copy, build the marketing, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. totally get that idea. Mm. But I think if you package this out so that you know people can still take a one session offer, or they can go, hey, there's really great value in a three session offer, and you're still getting minimum the same that you're getting now mm. and I think having that additional offer is actually going to help people possibly kind of go oh well maybe I do need to or you know yeah I don't I don't know that you would see a, a drop in your conversions to make you know if, if that makes sense yeah. so yeah, yeah. Mm. so something to think about there um, how much would you be willing to pay to get a new client so from a marketing point of view if you're getting somebody for fifty dollars an hour, and this is the other side of it on you, if you jack it up to, I said jack it sounds really bad, but if you increase the price to seventy-five an hour, <coughs> which is still great value for what you're offering, you know, how much of say that say fifty dollars at the moment, how much of that fifty dollars would you say that you would be willing to spend to get somebody to come in and be a client? As in to market. Yep. Marketing. So basically from that, because if that's $50 for a one hour session, some part of that is going to be spent in marketing, whether it's a Facebook ad or whatever. At the moment, it's all word of mouth. It's all free marketing. But the other option is, you know, what would you be willing to spend? Like if, if I could hand somebody, you know, you could hand me $5 or $10 and I give you a $50 client. You know, what's what's the value in that for you? What, what would be that number for you? Don't really know. Mm. Haven't something really, to think about yeah I haven't really thought about that at the moment um, and you're right I mean it, it is pretty much costing us nothing um, just time. To, to advertise yeah. yeah well I mean yes time is money so to speak oh, it absolutely I mean, is and you need um, to put a yeah. value on that time yeah. and mm -hmm. you know which is why I would say you know one on one for fifty dollars it, it's too cheap one on one if I'm getting your whole expertise focused on me for an hour for 50 bucks, man, I'll buy a 50 bucks session from you every time, mm. right? Because I'm ripping you off. <laughs> yeah, well, you know? uh, the other the thing... The maintenance that, class is even less expensive. Yeah, well, it works out to be um, $30 a class. Yeah. But, and, and it runs over a three-hour period. That's three hours. So that's oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, but also, too, um, I mean, the, 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 the students, they, they get between 20 and 25 minutes of run time. For maintenance Each for maintenance yeah. class. Yeah, then they have to work opposite their partner, which doubles that. Um, so they're they're working out for you know, about fifty minutes. Great, like that's yeah. really good. Mm. So look again with the pricing on that, I would I would yeah. really think about. But I think if I get if I get six students, then that yeah, works I, out for me to be sixty dollars an hour instead of um, great. fifty dollars. Look, and that's so the thing to, to look time. at. Yeah, what's the value for your time in that? If you're still happy with the fifty sixty dollars an hour, great. But then, what are the additional expenses covering some costs of your electricity for the lights, you know, the resources, the printing, all of those little things? And that might only add up to five or ten dollars a person, mm. but you have to cover that cost somehow in the money that you're um, raising from that. So yeah, well, we're going, we we are going to get a um, 
uh, 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 what do you call it? A shopping cart mm -hmm. um, uh, program, website. a little we website. website. We don't have a website yep. yet. That's the next big thing. But the, yep. the, the next step. Facebook at the moment yeah, and word of yeah. Mouth, so. I, I, I'm a big advocate for having your own yeah. space that you own and control. Yes. You don't control Facebook. No. And even if you pay, like, I'm running Facebook ads at the moment to give gift cards away mm -hmm. for my theatre show. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm watching the numbers every day. Mm -hmm. But you still don't have any control over that. And hey, yeah, and funnily enough, uh, Facebook's offline at the moment, and it's been offline for Today. the past ten Crazy. hours. Crazy. Yep, and that's the perfect example. So mm -hmm. the idea is to try and, and the whole idea with the gift card giveaway is to get people off of Facebook, off of all of those other platforms, and into my email list that I can communicate directly with, mm -hmm. because that's where I'm going to have that connection. You could do that on Messenger. I haven't moved there yet because I just haven't got my head into it. But, you know, getting them onto your own private email list where you can nurture them over time. Because there might be a whole bunch of people that aren't ready to buy yet, but are interested in, you know, if you're sending out a, a weekly acting tip on your mailing list or a couple of times a week, then that is just something that is pro pro providing value to them. They're going to be interested to stay. And at some point later, they'll convert mm. when they're ready. And it's keeping you in their mind. Yeah, and that's the big thing about being top of mind. I got headshots done on the weekend. Now, over the last two years, I've been thinking about getting new headshots done. I've been like, I've got to do it. I've got to do it. My, they were so out of date. Like, so bad. So bad. And for but the last two years, I've just, yeah, I've had a gig here and whatever. And when I thought I was going to do it, I had to spend the money on a car re repair or something. And you know? So it was just that sense of, and I courted two different photographers in that time going, hey, what's your pricing? Got the information. And just when I was about ready to do it, it just never worked. But neither of them have constantly given me any kind of, hey, how you going, Send just you checking in, mm -hmm. or even just communicating around that because they're polite, I get that. Yeah. Like, and they're busy, yeah. I get that. So I got an email from my agent saying, oh, hey, the photographer, he's actually the guy that shot my photos last time. He's coming back into town. We've got sessions on this date. It's this price. If you're interested, I went, oh, yep, I'm ready. Easy. I've got the time. I've got the money. It's all clicked into place right now. Boom, done. Yeah. If one of those other photographers had emailed me three days, five days, seven days before, they would have had my money because it was just that timing, you know? And so that, that idea of having people on your own email list that you can nurture over time because not everybody is ready to buy right now. And look, I sign up to a lot of email lists for marketing and business stuff because I want to see how other people are doing it. it. I learn from that. And at some point, there are some of those people I will convert with, you know, and that's an opportunity, you know, for you, obviously, as you build your website, build your mailing list, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, so what's the price of the maintenance class? Um, it's 120 for four weeks. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, and just look, we're getting back to cost incurred um, uh, in relation to um, a shopping cart, uh, that will be um, absorbed into the price as well. So, I mean, if it's if it's $120 at the moment um, and there's a percentage that's taken off for that ticket <coughs> price, so to speak, yeah, um, we'll be putting that into, we'll be adding that you to, to the that actual item. price. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You've got so. to cover all but that. But we are trying to be very competitive at the moment. Yeah, look, you know, -wise, absolutely. But the, the yeah. big thing I wanted to chat to you about was how you get people in the door and this yeah. sense that there's a really great, the marketing guy that, that I listen to has a phrase that he calls content, contentimonial, right? So he runs a podcast. So instead of going, yeah, you know, don't, don't get me wrong, get testimonials from the people that work with you. They are gold, absolute gold. And focus the testimonial on what it gave them, what the outcome was for them. Not, hey, Mungo's great, he's the best teacher I've ever had. Why is he the best teacher? What did it change in them? Talk, get them to talk about that in their testimonials because that's more compelling. That I was really struggling with this thing and Mungo helped me break through that. Not, Mungo's great. Yep. Because everybody's great, yeah. So when when people are offering testimonials, or if you are strategically asking them, hey, you know, I would love some honest feedback on, you know, and think about the question that you ask them. Don't just say, oh, I would love, you know, um, yeah, a testimonial. Hey, here's a questionnaire. You can stage four or five questions in a Google document that you send them a link to, and go, hey, just as part of the offer, we just really appreciate your feedback to continually make this better. Please answer these five questions. It'll take you two minutes send them a link to a Google folder and that you know might have just five questions in there but think about those questions in regards to 
how it gets the information out of them about how it's helped them, benefited them, changed them as an actor. Because then you can go back to them and go, oh, hey, look, this is a great phrase. Can I use this as a testimonial? And they're not in the mindset of saying you're great. They're in the mindset of going, this is the benefit I got out of it. And then you take that and use that as the testimonial. So that's just a really simple thing. Cost free, Google Docs are free. Set that up in a Google Drive. I've got a bunch of surveys in there that I use for feedback on stuff. So I definitely recommend doing that as well. And from that re re referral point of view, uh, not referral, sorry, the um, testimonial point of view, always think about it in terms of what that person has got out of it. So the other thing that he talks about is actually presenting. And so this comes back to that cost of acquisition, right? One of the things, like I, I got showreels shot with Chris Summers a couple of years ago. We did some showreel scenes. And the reason I did that was because I had been turning up to Scenorama as many weeks as, as I could. So we had a scene work class that we would do, cost me you know 10 or 20 bucks every time I turned up. There was a select number of people that were running scenes that night, so I could just audit on the evening if that's all I was there for. But that opportunity to be there in front of a camera with other actors in that room, learning from what I see if I wasn't running a scene. Then they made the offer to shoot showreel scenes for people. And I went, absolutely. And the reason I did that was because I could see the value that I was gonna get out of it. I'd seen them teach, I'd seen them do the work with other people, I'd experienced that in that environment. And so that is what um, Dean Jackson would call a contentimonial, that someone is actually experiencing and seeing what you can deliver before they even consider purchasing. It's exactly what I'm doing with this kind of thing, where if I'm having a conversation with anyone now that I think will turn into business and marketing stuff, I am asking if I can record that and then turning that into a piece of content for my channel because that is proof through that discussion that I know what I'm talking about, that if you listen to me say this stuff enough time, at some point somebody might ring me up and go, hey, Paul, I'd really like some help with something and you, know, you might be the guy to help me fix it. So I'm essentially putting that, <coughs> excuse me, that that experience out into the world at no cost and no you know no expense so that people can experience my skills and experience and then hopefully over time be compelled that I'm the guy that's what I want and so I it sort of been thinking about the reason I stopped going to Cinerama Chris changed his whole business model he set up the studio the factory doing great work like doing great work but the price of that became untenable for me as a weekly thing. And then it just became one of the things I never got around to going to. I was like, yeah, I definitely want to go. Oh, oh, oh something come up, something come up. And it's like, yeah, you know. So I think there's an opportunity there that whether you do that somewhere else and make it a big class, that's really low cost of entry to come into, enough to cover the cost of you know, the venue and whatever, maybe not even covering the cost of your time because that's your marketing, right? You're investing that couple of hours as you're marketing into that. It could be here in your studio where you have, people can sign up on certain days and you know, you can allow 10 other people to come for 10 bucks a night to come and watch you run scenes with somebody. And if that person's here doing their scene, then you know, either that's part of the deal, that if you're on a Tuesday night scene work class, there will be auditors there watching, um, or that person gets a slight discount for their them being on show. Yeah, <clears throat> that's the, that's so, the one thing that um, when it comes to auditing, um, I'm not a very big fan of that. Sure, I'm, I'm not a big fan of people just. Um, I, I'm very much, um, <clears throat> very much of, of the um, of the idea of if you come, you have to participate um, through acting, not just watching. Um, and, okay. Uh, with, with this auditing as well, it's sort of, is it giving you two cents worth? Like, or is it just shut up and listen and watch? And uh, my experience on everything I've been to audit is I am there to observe and learn what I can from what I see. I am yeah. not to participate in the work. Yeah. And and look, I understand if that's not something, then maybe you, know, you could run that class, pick one night and run one night where it is a large group session and you know people sign up in advance to be the people that run the scene that night you know maybe that's the entire framework of it so that that you know yeah, well, because again it's it's about making sure that people get to see what you can do because mm -hmm. if i 
you know, if I don't know you, then I'm going to go, well, you know, I see Chris has been in this show in LA. Yeah, Mungo's worked with those guys that made those films. I don't know. But, yeah, yeah, well, I mean, the, the thing about auditing as well is that I was, I, I mean, when it comes to the space that I'm working in, pretty much six people is the maximum that yep. I can work with. Um, but I was contemplating actually having um, two, uh, and I would call them sit-ins. I mean, yes, you can call them auditors. Call them um, what you like. People, people, like a maximum of two people sitting in, but they sit in for free. Yep. Perhaps um, you should still call it auditing if this is the terminology that people are used yeah. to nowadays, yeah. mm -hmm. but, but promoted as being free. It's yeah. the point of difference to everybody else who's charging for uh, it. Uh, I would absolutely disagree that you should let them do it for free. Yeah. Charge them at least ten bucks to walk in the door, because they have to have some kind of. Oh, I really want to go do that, because I mean, you, you want to kind of have some controls over who turns up. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, it, it'd be a, um, it'd be on a wait list basis. Like, a, you know, people can put their hand up for it, but it's like, well, there's only two people at a time. So if you come one week, then you just can't keep coming from week from week after week after week. It's like. You'll come. You'll come one week, and then if there are other people on the wait list, then it's their turn. Yep. So, so the other thing you could do with your um. So it's not. It, I wouldn't let them sort of just leech. Be there for know? six weeks in yeah. a row. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, and look, that would be all the parameters that you put around that. That there's a limit of two weeks in a row that you could come and, and order, you know, sit in or audit or whatever you yeah. want to call it. Yeah. But but I would definitely charge them at least something to walk in the door, because they need to understand that in order to get your service and your skill, that there is a cost involved. You know, and ten dollars is not a lot of money. You know, if I could come and sit and watch and order the class, I was. I was going to Cinerama week after week, paying ten bucks just to sit there and watch other people do scene work, because there was value in that for me to build the network, build the connection, meet people, see other actors work, see how these people direct that, get tips from the way that they got that person to. I'm, I'm getting value out of that, absolutely. So you know, and if somebody, I'll be honest with you, I hundred percent believe that. If you charge 10 bucks or 20 bucks for that, people will still come. Because you will have the people that are interested but not ready to commit $75. You know? And you might make it 10 or $15, but don't do it for free. Mm. Because you're just setting yourself up at the bottom end of the market. Just don't do it. Yeah, also too, I, I guess, um, you know, when people get it for free, they don't value it as much. Absolutely, that's that's kind of what I'm attaining to, so. Yeah, 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 because yeah. I've heard of that before, you know, yeah. sort of like. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that sense of somebody who's like, oh, a free acting class, great, or, ah, oh, it's 10 bucks, yeah, I can't be bothered. You don't want that person in the room. You really don't want them taking up the spot that someone else who is actually keen and more likely to convert to a one-on-one -on -one or a package session, you want them in the room. Mm. That's the person. There. And that just that $10, I mean, Matilda Awards this year is a great example. For years, the Matilda Awards have been free, right? We got a 450 seat theater that we're trying to fill with industry people, right? It's the industry awards night. It's always been free. We would have people book hundreds of tickets, like 10 tickets, four people turn up. We end up two thirds full, right? This year, because we've been talking about it for a couple of years, um, Nathan Sibthorpe suggested that we should be charging for it, and we went, yep, you're right, let's work it out. So we couldn't charge a ticket price because of the relationship with the powerhouse. So we put it up as a suggested donation, yeah. suggested donation of $10, but you know, as little as $1 would get you in the door. And we filled over capacity with actual attendance. Yeah. We were seating people in the balcony for the first time ever yeah. because we, there was value attached to that seat. Yeah. Mm. They had That's committed true. their money, yeah. and it was ten dollars. Most people only paid ten dollars, but instead of being two thirds full, we were a hundred percent full in the stalls and selling in the balcony. Yeah. First time ever, it's best attendance it's ever. It's almost the opposite of what you kind of think. You know, yeah. if, if something's free, then oh, everybody will come, but yeah. they don't. They but don't the thing the is, too, is yeah, to that's over. it. And the thing that money does by by putting a price on it you are filtering out your not ideal clients. Yeah. You don't want someone who's just gonna come and leech off you. Mm -hmm. You want someone to be committed to actually seeing it through. Mm -hmm. And even if for now that's just coming and auditing that class, that might be the one thing that makes them go, I'd really like to go back and do that go again. Back. Yeah, even if it's six months later. Absolutely, because we're playing the long game. 
don't think about the short-term conversion, right? The whole thing is about getting people attached and understanding who you are. The first thing they need to know is who you are. They need to know you. They can't know you. They can't buy from you if they don't know you exist. But then they also need to know what you do. And so you need to expose that. And don't be afraid of putting stuff on YouTube, clips, you know, make part of the deal of being here. Well, you know, I've got this YouTube channel and I'm putting the clips up on this YouTube channel. You know, we're going to put the scenes out there because we're shooting as actors. It means nothing if an audience doesn't see it. Part of the fear of what we do is putting ourselves in the public spectrum. So from a training point of view, it's the thing I did with QSC. When I first went into the Queensland Shakespeare Ensemble as the general manager, they have the training at the beginning of the year. They go away to Stratty for a week. They come back and they do eight to ten weeks of scene work every week, right? One night a week, the whole ensemble together doing that. And that was it. Then they performed the scenes for each other and that was it. And I said, why aren't you charging a ticket and putting this on? Oh, we don't want it to be a show. It's a training exercise. Fine, then just label it as a training exercise and charge 10 bucks a ticket, right? And they're like, oh, this is what you tell people. Set the expectation that that's what it is. Yeah. But, but as actors, our training is not complete until we have done it in front of an audience. Mm. And I think it's not fully trained. You know, I don't think you are finishing the training if you don't put it in front of an audience. And they're like, oh, oh all right, let's give it a go. And I think that they increases make, people's game too. If they it know does. It is going to be put out there. Oh, I'm just doing it for the guys in the room. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Oh, holy yeah. crap, there's an audience coming. Yeah. That is the completion of your training as an actor. It needs to be in front of people that you don't know. I think that's what I'll probably be doing tonight anyway when we shoot. Because um, uh, my camera's got a, a two memory card capacity in it. Right. So they've got their memory card or their SD card and um, I can put my own in. Brilliant. And just swap it over and film them on mine. Yep. Um, and then I'm able to actually like, I can probably yeah. utilize that. Because then people get to see, and I would even consider if you've got a second camera or your phone, set that up somewhere else so that it actually is capturing the discussion that you're having with them about the scene. Mm -hmm. It's not just the scene that they shoot that you put on YouTube. What you're trying to sell is your expertise. Yeah. Right? So you need to film you teaching them and put that on YouTube as well. Right, yeah, yeah. I was just stunned. I just... He's, he's building his, his kitchen. Ah, he's nice. Building nice. His kitchen. Um, yeah. Which, yeah, so, and that again comes down to that content testimonial. That people get, they, they will know you and then they will know what you do and they will like you and they will like the way that you do it. And then they will trust you and that's when they are more likely to convert. So. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Is it going to play? That's the monitor. This is last week. Nice. I should, I should. See, this, this is great. I mean, I love the way you make things look, right? And to have another camera that's back shooting the setup, shooting you, whatever, that's mm. more that kind of behind the scenes type stuff. But really putting out there some of the stuff that this is what we're working on, this is how it looks behind the scenes. But then, you know, you might have a minute or two of the teaching and then the scene after that, or it's a separate thing, the scene yeah. separate. This, this looks a little better because I pulled it back a little bit yeah. more, but that's that's actually what see, the picture looked like. I mean, and look, see, that's the thing, right? If that was on YouTube, people are going to go, oh, holy crap, this guy knows how to light a set. He knows what he's doing. And then you've got the teaching component as well. So yeah. for me, every session, there's at least two clips. You teaching something that night and the scene that was shot. And that's great content on a YouTube channel that mm. actors are going to find, that's going to build people knowing you, people knowing what you do, liking and trusting what you do, and then, you know, you can create an opportunity on your YouTube channel to link them to an email list, to link them to your website and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, so. I, I, well, I guess um, one of the things is that I'll, I mean, I, you can film it on... Uh, film it on your phone, it doesn't matter. Phone, like. People are more interested in, like, particularly from the teaching side of it, People will be interested in seeing how you teach, what you're teaching. And look, yes, they're going to learn from that. But the reality is, that doesn't matter. I mean, I can search YouTube right now and get a million acting tips, right? Yeah. This is marketing for you. You know, people people overseas might see it, that's fine. 
but for the local actors. And then what you've got is something that you can go, oh, hey, if you want to see what I do, check out my YouTube channel here. Then someone can go away and have a look at what is on your channel, see the work that you've done and go, oh, I actually really like the way he does that. Yeah. And that just helps them see you in the environment. It helps them experience what they're going to experience before they've paid money. Mm. And that's great, you know, to have that opportunity. Because mm -hmm. it's all, they need to know you, then like you, then trust you. And in between that, they need to know you, then know what you do, like you and like how you do it, and then trust you to deliver on that. Yeah. And yeah. so part of having the stuff on YouTube shows what you do, shows how you do it, and it builds trust in, yes, this is actually going to happen, and it's actually going to help me, and it's actually going to look good. So yeah. they get to see the end result all kind of in one easy place. And it's, it's something that you're just shooting as you go, so it's this whole kind of concept of documenting, not creating. You're documenting your process along the way, exposing that to people so you can go, if this is you, if you're interested in this, then here's where you can sign up. And it, half your work's done just purely by doing what you do. So there wouldn't be a danger though of like, you know, any of the, the content that I put on with my own direction, um, specifically relating to um, technique, um, would then sort of devalue what I do in person with people? Nope. Like, because people will see, peop I think we all know as actors that it's all different for all of us. And I think it's that sense of, so I listened to a podcast called More Cheese, Less Whiskers with Dean Jackson. He's the marketing guy that I follow. And his whole podcast is people ring up and he says, great, essentially this, it's this. He rings up, people ring up, he's got them scheduled, they booked, I'm actually gonna be a guest on the podcast. And he goes, okay, so what are you trying to achieve right now? What's the goal? Has, essentially has this discussion with them and then gives them marketing tips and, and business tips on what to do next to lead to that outcome, right? That is what he charges people $2,500 an hour for, <laughs> right? Mm. So I'm going to get a $2,500 consultancy for free because I'm going to be on his podcast. But what's the value in that for me? I've listened to all 140 episodes of that podcast and built my current framework out around the advice he's given other people. I've heard him apply that to restaurants, yoga studios, fitness boot camps and gone, that's interesting, that's interesting, that's interesting. How could I apply that to me? But it has to be applied to me. And it's the same with us as actors. I love the way that you did that with that scene. I love what you did with that actor. How would that apply to me? Because I want to get better. It's just purely going to convince them that you're the guy. So no, I don't think you are at risk at all. I actually think, and I'll tell you what, this is, this, what I'm doing right here with you now, this is my version of that because I did a market research on myself about 18 months ago, two years ago, when I was going to make this pivot into being more, making a business out of my creativity. And I went, what can I sell? I need to sell what people trust me for. So I sent an email to a hundred people and said, if I could teach you three things to help you do better in life or work or art or whatever, what would they be? And I got about a 30% response rate 80% of those people went business skills, managing leadership, understanding how to structure this business stuff. And I went, great, there's an opportunity for me there. And I already kind of knew that, but I wanted to have it confirmed. And so now I'm building part of my business around digging deeper and getting better at it myself, applying these skills myself. But then any time that I have a conversation with someone that I think will lead to a conversation around marketing, business development, whatever, because I love to talk about it, I really do, I ask if I can record it. I have a video on my channel talking to my mum about content marketing. I'm like, mum, this is gonna go somewhere, let me, let me film this. This will be good for someone else, right? Because then people get to see, I know what I'm talking about, I understand it, I can apply it to your business and your business and your business and your business, because the basic framework is all the same, right? Is anything you do as a director proprietary? Are you the only person that thinks that way? Is there any other directors in the world that would have the same possible oh, I'm idea? I'm sure there are shitloads. Great. So, yeah. does it matter if someone sees it? Mm. When they could YouTube it and find 12 other people who all have the same idea? Yeah, that's true. Nope. Yeah. Put it out there, get out there what you can do, and let the world see it, and then that will help bring people to you. Then you set up a framework where people can then get in touch with you. 
could be the description, every description. You just write a description that fits. You might go, oh, in this scene we're talking about this, 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 and this, specific to that scene. If you're interested in, you know, 50 acting tips that might change your life as an actor, click this link, takes them to a web page where they opt in, get a PDF download of your acting tips, whatever, and you're, they're on your email list. Or if you're interested in, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one consultancy, go here and it takes them to the shopping cart. Right? Mm. So you have that just as a set thing. That's the bottom of every description on your video. Oh, I can think of a tip already. You know, you know? How, how to identify when an actor's stealing your scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That 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 would be an amazing blog post. But you know, but that's the thing too is that in between all of the tips and the classwork and whatever, you could literally jump downstairs and go. Just had this really random thought, and I'm going to tell everybody right now. Here's how you know if an actor is stealing your scene, and you do a two minute video on that, put it on YouTube. Boom, done, right? Yeah, because it's one of the few things I think that um, actors really know about because it's never taught in school. No. no, you know, so there's all that stuff, like the myriad of information that will be in your head right now, every single one of those is a piece of content waiting to be made that's going to help reinforce that you are the guy for somebody out there. Get it out of your head and get it into the world. So what's the takeaway for you? What are you sort of, out of that discussion, what are you going, okay, what should I start with? Where are some, what are the, some of the things that you're like, some of the things that you're gonna take away from that? I, I'm worth more than what I think I'm worth. Yeah. Absolutely. And getting yeah. it out there so people who don't know you have the opportunity to find out who you are yep. yeah. and come looking for Yeah, people are never gonna book with a stranger. Yeah. And by having stuff on YouTube, from an acting perspective, it's the place to put it, right? People are going to get to know you. Yeah. So think about the value um, of your hourly rate and what you're going to get out of it. Think about packaging so yeah. that what people might not buy a three package, but if it's there as an offer, someone will. And then instead yeah. of getting sort of fifty dollars out of them, you've got one hundred and fifty dollars out of them now. Yeah. Right. You're still going to deliver on that, yeah. you know. But what you'll also find is that someone might go, oh, I want to test it. I'll buy the seventy-five dollar single package and go. That was really good. Now I'm in for two. Yeah. And then after that, they just keep coming back buying three sessions, right? And so you're getting that work booked ahead of time and paid for ahead of time. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing is it's not about just the one session now. If someone buys a three package session, you've got three sessions for the next three weeks booked in. Yeah. You're already done. Yeah, right? well, without them sort of relying on them to call me back up and say, oh, I'm yeah. ready to come in again. Yeah. So when you're looking yeah. at your shopping cart, um, there are some apps. Like, I don't know which website style you're going to go with. I'm on WordPress now. I do everything through WordPress websites because all the plugins you know, generally free. I've, I've bought a site builder that works really well. Um, but there are options like for consultants and that kind of stuff where people can pick a date when they book and yeah, so like calendar yeah the calendar yeah. option and so you know they can put that in and um you know if you can get them like if you've got your sessions for the next three months already laid out in a calendar and then people just pick the yeah. dates that they want and then that's filled yeah. you know or whether they purchase that and then it takes them to a calendar where they can see what's you know it might be a different app that is sent mm -hmm. to them in as a link in an email once they've purchased it sends them to your calendar which is pre-populated with the sessions you still have available, and then as they click them, they become unavailable. Yes. That's what we need, because at the moment, that's all manual. Yeah. Which is time-consuming and time yeah. money. So, if you can so do something up have a look at something like a Google Calendar. Mm. So, um, you know, Google's free, all the apps on Google mm. are free, and there's a lot of really cool functionality that you can do with that. And so mm. have a look into the Google Calendar and see if that might have an option for you. Um, uh, just as a starting point and you know think about a feedback survey that's going to generate some testimonials and feedback that you can use as content on your website that's going to just help reinforce it from the website point of view yep so brilliant how was that yeah very good thank you so much mm, my brilliant. pleasure my pleasure so there you go, some really great insights in that today, I think that can apply to any one of us, any of the businesses that we're trying to create to sell our art. So a couple of the important takeaways for me is number one, really start honing in on who's going to be your ideal customer, who are the people that are going to want to purchase and hopefully purchase repeatedly the product that you create, the art that you make. Now, whether you're an acting coach or a producer like me or um, you know, a musician or a visual artist, that's a really important thing to know and to develop that relationship with those types of people over time. And I think the big thing in that was that if you're not quite sure who that is yet, 
Well, start to think about who you don't want to sell to, who you don't want to be your customer, because sometimes uh, it's just as effective to start filtering those people out to refine the audience that you have until you find out who that ideal audience space is for the work that you do. Really important thing to think about. Another really uh, great concept that came out of that today, I think, was the idea of packaging. And is there an ability for you to package a few things together to add value that is gonna increase the uh, profitability of what you're doing? So for Mungo, creating a three package deal where someone can pre-purchase is gonna create uh, additional income in the short term that's gonna also pre-book him and have work already locked in for the next week or two and potentially as that grows into the coming months. And of course, the other thing that I think is super important is that concept of as you find people interested in what you're creating, get them onto an email list that you control so that you can talk to them and nurture them over time. People are not always ready to buy straight away, but they've shown an interest. So you wanna keep just nurturing that interest over time until they are ready to buy or they choose to opt out themselves. The fact that you can continue to you know, send an email a month or a week or whatever it is that's great for you, just to stay top of mind. You know, I talked about the photographers in that video who if they had stayed top of mind for me, would have got my business. So that idea of continuing to nurture that relationship. So lot to think about, lot to do. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got a lot out of that today. And of course, if you did, there is probably a good chance that you know somebody else who would also benefit from that. So please tag them in the comments, share it with them, whatever you've got to do to pay it forward. Now, of course, if you want to discuss this further more directly about your art and the work that you're doing, then click the link in the description and you can apply to be a guest on the business of art. And we can have a physical get together and record a chat on camera like this or over Skype and actually have a conversation about the work that you're doing and how we can grow your business together. So click the link in the description. It will take you to a page where you can apply and uh, I'll be in contact with you to be able to uh, help you do that. So until then, thanks very much. I'll talk to you next time.